Hey, I'm Kev Kerr, I'm a scum. Welcome back to MXGP3 and the fourth round of the MXGP season as we're heading to Argentina. And here we are looking at this very challenging, demanding circuit. As you can see, there's already some mounds there. And look how tight it can be as well. Much tighter than the Netherlands circuit we just visited. Passing is really going to be tough. That doesn't mean it would be impossible though. Let's just set off on our qualifying effort. Let's see if the hammer can get another pole. Go through this first section. And begin with some massive jumps. And you see it's a bit wider as well. First part of that. Get some scrubs on. And now, as we go into the middle section, here he goes. He starts to tighten and I was, oh, the hammer landed on someone. Well, it's not going to be a good qualifying effort, is it? And you see these mounds all about rhythm. And not land on people's heads. You also got some tight air pin corners here with the undulation. So now we can head uphill around the tree. Got lots of smoke as well, and it's like lots of blue smoke everywhere. As all the rider in front actually went a bit wide, and it's like oh, going into the air pin, giving for some good advertising. And now this section where it can go very wrong easily over those mounds. Now into the final part of the lap. Oh, you don't want to land on a sign. We say hi to the table person as well. Now over the final couple of corners. So 34 1 was that. Let's do a second that way he doesn't fall off. Because we do kind of need practice as well. Let's go through the right hand, a very tight. Now these massive jumps begin the lap. Not even daring to scrub. Once again, we do have that rider in front, though. Which could be an issue. As, oh, we go right past the druids again on those tables. Getting a real good close-up of the Honda. You go over the mounds. Good rhythm. That's like, that's what you need, hammer. And then into the hairpin. And even with this intermediate serving, you can really feel the tyres are digging in as there goes down. And Horbeck. Then over these mounds again, getting into that river. Make sure you don't get too nose down. Heading into the hairpin, or else you will land on the front, and that's never a good thing. Once again, there in that section is the hammer. Is he? No, he's down at the end of it. Let's see if he can nail the final part of this lap though and still be quicker than his previous effort. Because remember, he had a fall and then messed up this section. And it is better, 31. Which is good enough for Paul, despite the fall by over a tenth of a second ahead of Nagel. Then the teammate in third, Frenchman for Italian fifth. Then you've got the Russian, Colden off. You've got a fan hall bit, despite that fall in eighth. See the best Yamaha, the second best Yamaha, just ahead of the Swiss. And you've got Pullin, ran out of the top 10 with Sol in 13th, Snow in 21st, the Swede right at the back. So let's see what the Hammer can do in the first race. Yes, there we are, looking at the grid. we got the shed. As again, TV time is so. There we are, alongside our favourite shed. Let's see if we can get a good start. Not at all. Went into the gate. Tail will start once again for the hammer. Got it all to do going into the first couple of corners. Look at this very aggressive leaning on number nine as well over a jump. Not the best idea. And it's like he's just pushed Searle out of the way. It's like he's going towards the top ten. Going for the lead, is he already? Not quite. But oh, someone went wide. Oh, the Frenchman! Gone off! That's all. Then we're being pushed wide as well. And about for second, as oh, he's down once again, is that rider? 
This race has gone down every every round. Not every race. Not been that bad, but feels like it. It's up into second. And this, these are the realistic opponents, but it doesn't matter for the hammer. He's just turned up once again his level. He's going into the tight airpin or try to go for the lead from Nagel on the Hasvana. Oh, slightly wide. Oh, messed it up. How has he gathered that up and taken the lead? Fantastic from the hammer. Now, I did think Malta had made the opponents harder, but maybe not. After this performance, once again from the hammer, from last to first in a lap. He just cruises through the first corner. We still got four laps to go. It's all just about holding on to the bike. Get the old scrub on. And again. You can, oh, you can't cut that corner that much. Trying to be too cheeky was the hammer. Now he's got to let the German bat bite into the lead. As all the Frenchman is down behind. This hammer goes back for the lead. Going side by side. How many corners has this been? And oh, Nagel pushes him out. Taking away that cutback that he wanted. And now he breaks too deep into the next hairpin. Into the next one. Trying to get a good run over the mounds. It's like Nagel trying to take away that line. No. Nope. And he has the German. And oh, almost getting taken out. Now I'm a now into this section, very tricky section. And look at that, he nails it this time. Just like the first lap, it takes back that lead. Might have a race on battle with the German here. And it has Varno, as so he's taken back the lead in the final couple of jumps, has he? Oh, the hammer, very aggressive. Has he gone to the third lap? I think he's leading. Over the German. Or has he pushed him back? On the Yamahas. To go over the massive jumps. Must be fantastic for the crowd either side to see this. this bike going towards space. Or try and meet them in it's like at the end of it. And no, it was Nagel still in second. But back into the lead. But here comes Hammer once again after a mistake. Taking it back immediately. No side by side this time. I and mean, oh, he does chop off Nagel as well aggressively. With a right hander. Now into the hairpin. Get right down to second gear there. Now he needs to use a bit of the rear brake as well to get the bike through there. Now it's all about rhythm. Using a bit of the rear bike as well to rip. Round on the exit. This section, oh, the hammer has been nailed in. Once again, gathered it up. Wasn't able to do that in qualifying, but can do it in the race. Easily. As so once again, the flags waving a bit, a bit weirdly. You decide to say it's gone to penultimate lap of the race. Entertaining race. It's been a good battle between them and Nagel. But let's see if we can stop finally putting away. Not making the mistakes either. So I tried to get on the power, but getting the bike just skipping over the surface rather than gripping. And it's just right through the crowd are cheering. So you go, that's a more conventional line through that right hander. Look at that crowd cheer. Very happy. It's, oh no, he's run wide. I think that's past the team as well. They're not going to be very impressed. But he still leads. There's all the Frenchmen down again. They're having a horrid season on the Kawasaki. Let's go over the jumps. Oh, too much rearward. And the hammer. It makes it into the hairpin. 
Actually, that's a pretty good line through there. Good exit. Oh, that's not good. Oh, he's landed it. He can somehow roll in his head as well. I'm surprised it's still attached to his head. That's, that's much better into the final corner. And going on to the final lap, can the hammer hang on to this win? To himself as well. Making mistakes all the time. But even still against the hardest opponents you're going to have. He leads here in Argentina. Very good circuit as well. Because you have corners like these. A good set of mound, very challenging circuit. That's probably the best thing about it with the undulation as well. Really good use of the undulation, having the corners like this that flow into each other. No real rest for the rider. No straights, really. Because there's always mounds here and jumps. So we're always having to do something. Just think about how to set it up into the next corner. Really is wonderful. Especially this section. Getting this right, like that. Very difficult. It's all oh, the hammer! It's messed up. But he still leads. He's going into the final couple corners for what you tie land this. But this way he's gonna hold on. For the victory, once again. As he really is flying at the start of this season. And he wins ahead of his teammate. One, two, Honda by three seconds. Then we've got cold off again on the podium in the first race. Well done to the KTM rider. Nagel in fourth, despite challenging. Seems to have been pushed back. The final couple of laps for the victory. Then we've got Van Horbeck, ran out of the top five, there's a fellow Belgian, there's Coroni in seventh, then Desali in eighth, Desali in eighth, then Pullen in ninth, and then we've got the Russian ran out of the top ten once again. Good comeback for the Italian as well in eleventh, and he has fun having a horrible weekend in the Netherlands, as it's your usual suspects outside the points. So a perfect beginning for the Hammer. There was to be a perfect ending as well. So there we are, setting up for the second race. As in, it's like no one's getting TV time, are they? So trying to, but preparing for this race. As we up the engine. And tries to... And another shocking spot for the hammer. He's definitely going to be last for the first corner, is he? No, very aggressive once again as his teammate gets the whole shot. Which is... If I haven't explained that yet. Or re-explained it, is when... Ryder is first through the first corner. As it looks like, the hammer trying to get back into the lead. As all, where did Nagel go? And now it's the teammates, elbow to elbow. Being pushed wide by the Savinian. But the hammer gets the lead already. Let's go through the hairpin. Look at that nice whip action on the rear end. But, oh, he goes wide, almost gets taken out by his teammate. Look, it's a good exit. Not there, Pin. And through the mounds. Gonna get into a good rhythm. And good exit, that. Nice and clean. And all trying, like hell, to survive those jumps. Definitely the trickiest set of jumps on the calendar. But he does it, does that, Matt? Use that rear end again to get around. And on to the second lap. Leading once again, despite some issues. As oh! The Dutchman is down. Once again, he's going to have a second race from hell, just like his home round the last time out. Just can't put a consistent weekend together, unfortunately. Well, the only guy who's been doing it is this one. 
So that is why they have these. There's all the Swedes down, so is the Belgian. Right at the back of the field. Might open up an opportunity for Snow to score some more points, though. So we're taking too much air in the jump. What's that, Matt? Goes wide. Has to rejoin the track, but still re rejoins in the lead. That's the one thing about this weekend which has been disappointing for them is loads of mistakes. Again, very tricky circuit, one of the trickiest on the calendar, but you'd be hoping he wouldn't have many heart attack moments as he does. Especially through this section in the opening race. Still can't believe he landed on his head and made it through. Obviously made of steel. So he goes on to the further lap. Doesn't quite get under the 130 mark, 130.9. Let's see if we can do that. That could be his aim. If he cuts out the mistakes. Might lead to more actually. They go nice tight line. Oh, is it on the exit just about? Crowd cheering either side. There you go, good scrub, but then it makes him take the wide line, it looks like. But that's a pretty good line, is it? No, he's down. So it's cold and off behind in 12. Oh, he won't push to be under 1 minute 30 then with Hammer. As Town needs now down as well. Lots of fallers again in this race. And that's the one thing I do like about this game is that the opponents are very human. It's definitely something that Marlton have done well over the years of improving. Making your opponents human like that. They're not racing wise. They're pretty aggressive. I know. In this game, for one playing now, it seems to be pretty good. Can be a bit aggressive, but not overly aggressive like MotoGP 17. Can be at times. Especially at the end of the long straights, they seem to, in MotoGP 17, not be able to control themselves and kind of dive bomb you. As you saw the Swiss rider down as well from a top 10. Not good to see. And oh, again, the Belgian down from last. He's just having a horror race. It's on the Panotto lap. Hillman, despite his issues, having a dream one once again. He can make it another oval perfect weekend as well. Should have four from four, but it'll be three from four if he does this. Lovely Netherlands and Qatar. And if he didn't mess up right at the end in. That first Thailand race, it would have been a perfect season so far. And you see that quite a bit in motocross as well, while he's getting on good runs. So I've heard into quite a lot in the MX2 class. See with the Italian as well. That's oh, that's not good over the jumps. Just about holds on though. So that's a good jump though. Oh, I'll take that beautifully, that section. Oh, and then he goes into the stewards. Just as he was about to have a mistake free lap. Actually, he wasn't, was he? Did he fall? Or was that the previous lap? It's all blown into one. This race already, and we're all in the final lap. That's the hammer. The hammer. That's around 1,500. 1.5 miles to go as he's down again. What is happening to Van Orbeck? Is he even riding a bike? Are you sure it's still got two wheels on it? That's the only explanation I have for him for him so many times this race. Must be in double figures now. As that's the best he's taken that section as the hammer. Look at this. Taking it beautifully. Taking a wide line. Cutting the apex there. Taking a wide exit as well. 
do love the smoke as well. Not just hearing the crowd sounds, but seeing in kind of an atmosphere as well. And these circuits seem fantastic. Lots of crowd members too. So once again giving four some good advertising. Look at that, it's a packed around here. So that's a good rhythm. This time to don't go near to the steward. There's just a couple of corners to go. And it's another perfect weekend for the hammer. And look at that, way under the 1 minute 30 marker as well. Shows what happens when he doesn't make mistakes, as he wins by 5.6 seconds out of the Italian back on form. Then the French one, the MR in third. Then it has Varnard Naga in fourth. Then the Kazaki, the Belgium in. We've just said the French one has to confer it down. There's the Italian getting a top 10 on has A very good result ahead of the up and down Colden Hoff in that race. Now there's a teammate down in 13th. Down in 14th. Lots of fallers in the second half of this field. It allows Alex Snow to score points. And the Swede as well as there is Van Horbeck. I'm surprised he's just three seconds off the back of the field. I thought it would be three minutes maybe. So another perfect weekend for the Hammer. 14 points over his nearest rival. Uh, so if we go through the field, I think everyone has scored points from this weekend. Yes, they have. Although the French went on the Yamaha, had another horror show with another fool. And so did the Swede and Annick Snow as well. And Tommy Sill down in 19th on the Kalazaki. So in the championship, it's over a weekend lead for the Hammer. A round lead. 51 points ahead of the French win, who's 8 points ahead of the Hammer's teammate. And then we got Nagan fourth. And Colden off down to fifth, four points behind the German. Just a single point ahead of Coroni's on the comeback trail on the KTM. Ran out of top 10 is the Kazaki. They're still in 15th. Alex Snow still out the back, though. Just three points. As another reputation credits Hall for the hammer and his skills improving all the time as next time i'll be going up to mexico and the leon circuit with intermediate ground 1.5 meters long it is a 1575 meters long it is a bit like argentina but with less undulation some tight sections some tricky mounds and sections to go through as well and once again, Fodama has got to achieve 47 points and beat the Frenchman. He did it in Argentina. Can he do it again next time out? Find out then. Southwatch, and I'll see you then.